I had a choice to show up to my date in sweats and a t-shirt and messy hair or I could figure out a way to get into my house. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of me reacting to your wedding stories, good or bad. We get a lot every week, so I'm so excited to see what we've got in store this week. First and foremost, a couple of announcements. If you guys want more, whether that's more Ferris and Sloan, you want more of the insider scoop, behind the scenes, more confessions, sign up for my new newsletter. We are sending out weekly newsletters that are gonna be kind of a mix between a gossip column and an empowerment piece. I don't know if they always fit together, but it's gonna be a fun read. You're gonna get more confessions, you're gonna get more stories that I'm not sharing anywhere else, and updates on future projects coming very soon. Some of these projects have to do with Ferris and Sloan, and some of these projects are completely separate, sharing more wedding drama, horror stories, and of course, wedding and event plans planning tips. So it's going to be so much fun. Plus every week you'll get the newest storylines and skits sent directly to your inbox so you don't miss a beat. So click the link below if you want to join the insider scoop. Okay, next announcement, which kind of ties into the newsletter, but is also a separate thing, is merch of the month. I designed some exclusive merch that's going to be available this month only, and it's a two-sided design and I'm really excited about it. I actually just ordered mine yesterday. Basically the front is a very minimalist, pattern and then the back is this really beautiful design that says protect your piece that is available now and only through the month of November. So get it now at the link below. All right, on to today's story. As always, I did not read the story, just the beginning and I saw it looked pretty good. So let's dive in and see what we got. Oh, do I have a story for you. This story is getting to the first date with my now husband. I had a four-year-old daughter at the time. I'd been separated from my ex for two years, didn't really date and never really introduced my daughter to anyone. I had just advanced in my career and bought my first townhome and my friend, she says the friend's name, but to be anonymous, I'm going to say C. My friend C was renting out the basement. I also had a dog and was excited to put a dog door to a small fenced in patio so she could go outside. It's very relevant to this story. I was at a really good place in my life since my ex and I split and we figured out co-parenting. C convinced me to start dating again, but because I was a single mom with a full-time career and not much free time, I joined a dating site. I was kind on it and talked to a few guys but didn't really like it enough for me to date them. I wanted a guy that was mature and someone that I could eventually introduce to my daughter. Then this guy, I'm going to call him Jay, messaged me. I looked at his profile and he was a few years younger than me, shared a name with my brother, which made it a little weird, but he was so handsome and seemed very interesting in his profile. He actually read my profile and when he sent me the first message, he was polite, respectful, and mature. He piqued my interest. He was the only person I gave my number to and he understood that I wanted to take things slow, especially because I have a daughter. He worked construction and was busy a lot, so he spent a few weeks texting and calling and a few video chats before we were able to actually meet on a date. It was going to be dinner, but let me tell you, I was so nervous to meet him. The night before the scheduled date, C wasn't feeling well at all. She had been sick for a little while now and the doctors would just send her home with a different med and never really took the time to figure out what was wrong because she was a 28 year young female that had always been healthy. She was in between jobs and didn't have any health insurance but she was getting so skinny and scaring me a little bit. The first few hours before the date, she was in a ball on a couch, physically in pain, and I decided to cancel my date and take her to the ER. I got her into the car and used the keys to go back to lock the door. This is relevant also to the story and got her to the hospital. Her parents were at the hospital when we got there. I wasn't expecting them, but she didn't want me to miss my date. She pretty much made me leave and I decided to go because her mom promised to update me throughout the night. So I left the hospital. I texted Jay that I was running a little behind, but I was still going to make it to dinner. I needed to run home quick and change. Got home and realized my house key was not on my key ring. My care Carabiner was cheap and there was a few times that my house keys fell off inside but I'd always realized it when I was locking the door. I remembered that I used C's keys to lock the door this time so I was locked out with the other key to the house being at the ER. I had a choice to show up to my date in sweats and a t-shirt and messy hair or I could figure out a way to get into my house. I really wanted to impress this guy. I remember I had a doggy door, excited that I installed this door. So I went around the back, but I also had to figure out how to jump the fence to get to the doggy door. There was a big flower pot that I struggled to flip over, but I got it. I jumped on it and jumped my fence and scared the crap out of my dog. I only fit the top of my body through the doggy door and was able to unlock the back door. And because we were in a rush to leave, I didn't secure the bar and I was able to finally get into my house. 
I had 15 minutes to get dressed and get to the restaurant that was 10 minutes away. So really five minutes to get ready. But you know what? I did it and I was only a few minutes late. That is very impressive, actually. I started to wonder if it was worth how stressed I was about C and then breaking into my house and being late, which stressed me out even more. But when I got there, my heart fluttered. The smile, the hug, the giggling and flirting until the restaurant closed, the wait was all worth it. That was the first date to the start of forever for us. The next day I found out C had colon cancer. Oh my gosh. And her mom still tells everyone I saved her daughter's life that night with everything going on. C is the reason I have this amazing family now. With how hard it was to find the time to meet if I would have canceled, I don't know that we would have rescheduled. It's now been six years and C is cancer free. Married to her best friend, Jay and I are married with two kids, a beautiful house, a few pets, and new careers we both love. All thanks to that crazy night. I love that. What a crazy turn of event to meet the love of your life. And what a fun story to tell everybody now. And I'm so glad to hear that C is cancer free. And thank you for sharing this. I know people are always saying they want to hear more happy ending stories and lighthearted stories. And it wasn't directly a wedding story, but this was a love story. And I think this is beautiful. I think this could be, this could be like a movie, like, I love this. So thank you so much for sharing that story. I loved getting a little mix of something that was kind of funny to picture, but not super dramatic. So a nice little change of events. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and tuning in with me this week. Remember to subscribe to my newsletter if you want some more fun confessions, drama stories, updates, and just some crazy stuff sent to you. I don't know. And, uh, and so much more. All right, guys, I will see you next week. Bye now.